Hey everyone, George here and welcome back to the channel. Happy New Year to all of you. Hopefully 2021 is getting off to a good start for you. Uh, today we're going to be talking about one of my new favorite fish, uh, a fish that I've kept before but has been quite a while uh, since I've had these fish in my tanks and that is the uh, electric blue dwarf ram cichlid, uh, otherwise known as uh, Microgeophagia ramirezi, which is a bit of a mouthful, but uh, that is the scientific name for this particular fish. Now, these guys, I think, are one of the most beautiful fish that you're going to keep in either a species tank or a community tank. They do well in both. Uh, with a little bit of information about how to do that best. Uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit as we go through this. I'm not going to make this a long video, but I want to be thorough and make sure that you understand uh, some of the important aspects and needs of this particular fish before you run out and buy them. So number one thing that i want to talk about is the origin of this fish of course uh, ram cichlids or dwarf ram cichlids are south american uh, in nature uh, so the origin of the fish would basically be uh, most parts of the lower part of south america uh, they can be easily found uh, in rivers and tributaries, uh, and even some lakes, I guess, uh, as far as what I'm reading uh, when I read about these fish. So uh, they do have quite a span of territory in South America that they can be found. Um, they are a very, very hardy fish, but only if you are keeping them in the right tank condition. So you want to make sure that you are keeping them in a tank that is no less than 20 gallons. And uh, I recommend 20 gallons to up to 40 gallons if you're keeping a group of these. If you're keeping a male and two females, I've even had people go down as low as 10 to 15 gallons. But I just don't recommend that. I really think that they thrive and do best in a situation where... Uh, they have enough room to move around and stake out a little bit of territory of their own. Now, if you are keeping a species-only tank, as I said, a male and two females, I've seen them in 10 to 15 gallons, but I really would like to suggest that you keep them in a 20-gallon uh, tank at a minimum, and uh, if you're keeping a group of these fish, in other words, several males, several females, uh, along with uh, some uh, algae eaters and other things in the tank uh, that you do go up beyond that 20 gallon up into a uh, you know 30 to a 40 gallon even and uh, that's just really going to be best suited for these fish also something that's very important to these fish is that the tank is well established in other words uh, the tank has been running for a long time and the water parameters are ideal. Uh, we're going to get into water parameters in just a second here, but also that this tank is a well-planted tank because these fish do like to have areas of the tank where they can go and uh, hide or just go off and be by themselves for short periods of time whatever but they uh they tend to like that so um i really really think that uh if you are going to keep them in uh anything less than a 20 gallon that you're really doing yourself a disservice and the fish a disservice because i've noticed the more territory these guys have and the less um, aggression towards each other that they have the better the color now um I am keeping just a male here, as you can see. I don't even have any females in this tank with this male. And he's really just sort of the highlight fish for this tank. Now, I am keeping him in here with a couple of pistos, which he seems to get along great with them. Haven't seen any territorial issues at all. Every once in a while, they may skirmish with each other, but that is not something that's unusual 
for cichlids to begin with, but I see nothing that concerns me at all. Uh, the fish is extremely healthy. Everyone seems to be getting along pretty darn well. Uh, and of course, mine is a community tank where I am keeping some rummy nose tetras in there as well. And uh, this has been working really, really good for me. Now, when you're buying these fish, I would be careful to make sure that you're getting them from a good supplier who is being honest with you as to whether or not these are wild caught or tank raised. As I said, the wild uh, ones uh, in this species tend to be a little bit more colorful and a little bit more hardy. Uh, I don't know why that is, but they, they just tend to be. so. Uh, you're going to see in the wild ones that the that blue is going to be extremely vibrant uh, as long as the tank conditions are really good. So, uh, as I said, when you're buying them, look for certain things. Make sure that they are eating. Make sure that you watch them eat a variety of foods. Maybe go back over a couple of days before you make the purchase to have... Uh, the um, aquarium store or fish store uh, feed them a couple of different kinds of foods just so that you can be confident that these fish are eating a variety of foods that are going to keep them in good shape because they really do need that uh, they they should be kept in tanks where uh, food variety is um, you know varied uh, now let's get into what i recommend as far as parameters on this tank uh, temperature should be between 78 and 86 degrees fahrenheit or 26 to 30 degrees celsius now i think it's optimal to keep these guys right around 81 to 83 degrees or 28 degrees celsius uh, they just seem to be uh, at their best as far as personality and the way they move about the tank and so forth in that temperature range. As far as pH goes, well, you got a pretty broad pH range here. 6.0 to 7.5 is what I recommend. Now the wild caught again can tolerate a little bit more fluctuation in that pH and uh, that is a good thing. So another reason why if you can get the wild caught in this species, uh, the better you're going to be. Now, as I said, tank size 20 to 30 gallons for a small group of these, and even a larger aquarium up to a 40 gallon if you're keeping these in a group of, uh, you know, several males, several females. Again, I don't have that situation here. I have a community tank uh, with the one male and uh, that seems to be working really well for me and uh, I know this just from experience that I've had with these fish in the past so uh, yeah you want to make sure that you do have enough room and as I said a well planted tank now if you're going to keep them in a community tank uh, they're going to do well in a community tank that's really not the issue as you can see I have some apistos in here uh, and I also have the rummy nose tetras, but I also have bottom feeders like Julie Corey's. I have uh, some autosynclus, and I also have some Siamese algae eaters in here. Uh, now, these are all cleanup fish, of course, and are probably not going to have any problems with your electric blue to begin with, but uh, I'm just giving you the full um, count of fish that I have in my tank here. And uh, as you can see, uh, just a really, really well-established tank plant-wise and so forth. That is so important, I think, in keeping these fish healthy. Now, uh, one of the things that I recommend is that you do frequent water changes. Uh, if you do watch my videos and you pay attention to what I recommend for any tank water change, then uh, you're not going to have any problems in keeping this fish healthy over the long term. As far as spawning goes, uh, these guys are egg layers and they are extremely territorial and protective if you are going to try to uh, breed these fish 
what I do recommend is a 20 gallon with one male and two females and letting them pair up and uh, you'll know when uh, they have spawned if the conditions are good and the temperature gets raised up to around 84 to 86 degrees these fish will readily spawn if they are mature and uh, they will be extremely protective of their eggs so uh, that's something that uh, if you're interested in, in breeding them I would keep that in mind now uh, a little bit more about these fish that I found is, man, do they have personality. Their personalities are, are really something that, uh, I, actually I've noticed that with all ram cichlids uh, or dwarf ram cichlids, that uh, they tend to be just really intelligent fish with a lot of personality. And man, that goes a long ways towards the enjoyment of these fish. And uh, what I would say to you is this particular male that I have that you're seeing in this tank here comes right up to the glass, interacts with me all the time, will follow my finger along the glass. And uh, I don't know, there's just something you can even see in their eyes that tells you that these guys are just a little bit smarter than the fish, the rest of the fish in your tank. And... Uh, that's that's kind of fun because the interaction with these guys is something I think is really important if you're if you're going to keep them uh, it, it's it's really nice to be able to interact with these fish and enjoy them anyways that is my profile on these guys again a well planted good size 20 gallon or more is best for these fish if you're going to put them in a community setting 20 to 30 gallons I think is best. Now, um, substrate in this, I would recommend that you can, if you can do sand, you're probably gonna do best with that, but I have not had any problems with this darker uh, fluval stratum substrate that I have in here. So I don't think that's a huge issue, but something to consider uh, as far as them picking through sand, that would be their natural environment to do that. But uh, it, like I said, it's not necessary that you do that. They will uh, pick through uh, larger pieces of substrate and find food, you know, just fine. So anyways, thank you guys for joining me today. Please uh, leave your comments down below if you're keeping these fish and you disagree with anything I've said or you want to add something to what I've said, really appreciate that. Hit the like button. Also, subscribe. Uh, this tank really does grow off uh, the subscriptions that are coming from the video being shared. So not just what people are looking for on uh, YouTube, but also uh, word of mouth. So anyways, happy New Year's to you guys. Thank you for joining me today. Hit that bell in the upper right hand corner and happy New Year's to you. We will see you on the next one. Thank you.